Hi guys and welcome to the next video of this entire series. In this video, I will be discussing what is anti-malware engine and how does it work. In the last video, we discussed what is connection filtering and how does it work and how we can create and manage connection filter policies. In this particular session, I will be discussing what is anti-malware protection and how does it work. And then I will be showing you how we can create and manage anti-malware policies. Microsoft Exchange Online Protection offers inbuilt malware capabilities that help protect inbound as well as outbound emails from malicious software. Anti-malware uses multiple antivirus engines to scan the emails. Anti-malware engines scans the emails for three major categories of viruses. First category is virus. Viruses infect programs and data and it spreads through your computer or network to infect the programs. The second category of virus that anti-malware engine scans is spyware. Spyware is a type of virus that gathers your personal information, for example, sign-in information and personal data. And then it sends this data back to the author. The third category of the virus is ransomware. Ransomware encrypts your data and demands for payment to decrypt it. Anti-malware engines detect and remove the malware payload that is associated with the ransomware. If anti-malware engines detect any sort of malware within the email or within the email attachment, those emails are moved to the quarantine and only an administrator can review or release those emails. In anti-malware policies, we can block certain types of files. For example, .exe, .jar, .app, or .vbs. If any email contains these type of files, that email will be moved to the quarantine. Anti-malware policies can be managed from Security and Compliance Center and from Microsoft Defender for Office 365 as well. If you want to manage anti-malware policies from Security and Compliance Center, you will go to Threat Management. Under Threat Management, you will click on Policy. And under Policy, you will click on Anti-Malware. If you want to manage these policies from Microsoft 365 Defender, then you will click on Policies and Rules, Threat Policies, and Anti-Malware. You will click on Default. If you want to modify the default policy, you can click on edit protection settings. Now again, this is the default policy which cannot be disabled or deleted. If you want to create a custom anti-malware policy, you can click on create. And here we will assign a name for this policy and click next. Under include these users, groups and domains, you can add the users, groups and domains that you want to add or include under this policy. Exclude these users, groups, and domains is this section is where you can exclude the users, groups, or domains from this particular policy. Once you have made the changes, click Next. Under Protection Settings, you can define the extension of emails that you do not want to receive within your organization. These settings, these extensions are already added. For example, .ace, .ani, and these many extensions. If you want to add a custom file type or extension type, you can click on Customize File Types. Under this list, you can select any extension that you want to block within your organization. For example, this one. Click Add, and this extension will be added as well. Enable zero hour auto purge for malware is Zap. Zap is a feature which scan the emails even if the emails has been reached within the mailbox or within the inbox. So if Zap is enabled and if Zap will find a malware within the email which is in the inbox of the mailbox, Zap will move that email from the inbox to the junk folder. Next section is notification. Under notification section, you can specify if you want to receive notifications or if you want to send notifications to the senders. 
For example, the option says notify recipients when messages are quarantined as malware. Let's say that one of the users of your organization has received an email, but that email was moved to quarantine because a malware was detected. So do you want to notify that recipient if his email has been moved to the quarantine? Other settings are for sender. For example, if somebody has sent an email to your organization and that email has been moved to the quarantine because malware was detected within that particular email. So do you want to send a notification to the internal senders or do you want to send notification to the external senders if the sender is external? Under admin notifications, you can specify if you want to send a notification to an administrator about the undelivered messages from the internal senders. In the same way, you can specify an email address if you want to notify that email address about undelivered messages from external senders, the emails which are sent by the external users. If you want to customize the notification, you can enter the from name, from address, and a custom notification will be sent. Once you make the changes, you can click next. You can review the changes and then click submit. This is how you will create a custom policy. Now, again, if you create a custom policy, custom policies will always take precedence over the default policy until and unless you haven't defined priority for the policies. So if you have multiple policies, so based on the priority, the policies will take effect. So in this session, we have discussed what is anti-malware engine and how does it work? And we have discussed how we can create and manage anti-malware policies. In the next video, I will be discussing what is advanced threat protection or ATP. I will be discussing the architecture of ATP and how does safe attachment and safe link policies scan the emails. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.